Hey again, everybody. This is Comic Book Hangover. It is Friday. That means it's time for Full Run Friday. And as I promised earlier this week or last week or whenever, uh, I am going to be doing my Doctor Strange books. Now, keeping in mind that my Doctor Strange run, it's sort of a mishmash. Uh, you know, there, there's there's series and there's runs in there for sure, but... Um, I don't really go out and, uh, and, well, let me put it this way. Doctor Strange is one of those books that I don't go out and just look for keys. I don't even really consider that for the most part. I, I look at, uh, you know, guest appearances of characters that I like. And I also look at, <clears throat> excuse me, I also look at covers that I think are pretty cool. So I don't go out and just buy, oh, this is the key, this first appearance of this character, this first appearance of that character. So I, I may have some of those in my collection. I actually haven't gone really really gone through my Doctor Strange books to see what kind of keys or slight keys or anything like that that I have. So um, why don't we go ahead and jump into this. I've got, um, now my Doctor Strange books are in, in uh, short boxes. So there's going to be two of them. So it'll be, there will be a slight break in this video when I get to the second box. But let's go ahead, flip this camera around and take a look at my Doctor Strange books. All right, so here we go. Let's let's go through my Doctor Strange books. Um, again, these are going to be split among two two different boxes. So uh, do some fine adjusting here. Hopefully, don't screw up the recording. All right, here we go. All right, so this one here. This we're going to start off right off the bat here. This is one of those books that I picked up because simply and only because I loved this cover. Uh, there's just there's just no way around it. This to me is an amazing cover, probably one of my favorite Doctor Strange covers of all time. I just I don't know what it is about it, but I just absolutely love that cover. Uh, this is his first, I believe this is his first ongoing series. It's number five. Uh, I think this is one of the books I picked up through. Might have gotten it through Cody Con or just found it in a dollar bin at a show somewhere. Dormammu. Always like the way that the character looked, his design. All of the uh, the different iterations of Strange on that cover. We got number uh, number seventeen. And I also just love the way that these older books were drawn, especially you know, the stuff like the Doctor Strange and the the Tomb of Dracula and and uh, the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider run. I just love the way uh, these 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 covers were drawn they're so unique among, among among the marvel books i think that's uh let's see there's a um, submariner in the background i'm not sure if that's if that's brother voodoo or not probably not he seems a little mean for the character again like i said there's there's not a whole lot that i could talk about with these books um most of them i don't, I don't even think i've read most of these Individually, um, I do have the uh, some of the essentials. Um, I'm hoping to get some uh, epic collections going for this for this run, so I can read them. Older books, it's easier to read them if you have them in a collection of some some sort. Um, I do have essentials. Yeah, the essentials I do have. I just got to get around to reading them. I like that one. I think that's the the lurking fear in the background. Sorry about the focusing on this. Still using a new camera. Still getting used to it. Not quite sure what it can or can can or can't do. What I should or shouldn't do with it. But uh, now you'll notice this one here doesn't have a board on it. It's because this is this one. I think I got through a mail order thing, a blind box, and it's it's really beat up. It's an older one. It's issue forty six. This is uh, got a cover year of nineteen eighty one on it. It's really beat up, so it's it's one I'm gonna I'm gonna put in my collection, but I'm not gonna put a I, I put a new bag on it, but I'm not gonna put a board on it. I I'm looking to replace it with a better copy. So it's it's just kind of in there as a placeholder, and also kind of it gives me just one more book that I can I can say I have in my collection. You know, you know how it goes. And we're up to fifty two. It's got Nightmare. Nightmare is one of my favorite uh, villains when they do them right. Parents of the Fantastic Four, and hey, is that uh, Rama Tut? That might be Rama Tut. We got a an earlier appear an early appearance of uh, Kang there. 
in my collection. An early appearance for my collection, I should say. I love I love the coloring on this cover. That's got some great colors on it. Another one of my favorite covers. I just just something about these old Marvel books. Got some great great covers. I don't think I have any uh, any books from the Doctor Strange era where he had the eye patch though. This is one of the first uh, first issues that I bought from this Doctor Strange run because I love Tomb of Dracula. I love this version of Dracula. I don't like what, you know, again, as always, I don't like what Marvel has done with the character recently. His new design, I think, is is very much lacking in uniqueness. But I love the original look for Dracula in the Marvel Universe. I love his attitude. Just, just love everything about the character. Right, there's the Beyonder, a little bit of Secret Wars 2. And this is my recent edition, the final issue of this run, first appearance of Rintra. And then we get into another ongoing series. Actually, look, I do have one where he's got the uh, the eye patch. I didn't know that. Hmm. Go figure. Hey, look, there's another one. I really need to look at these books more often. I love that cover, too. This is the Faust Gambit. I don't know what this is about, but I, I think I'm missing one part. That's part one. Yeah, I'm missing part two. And if there's anything after part two, I'm missing as well. Uh, from this series of Doctor Strange, this is the first one I bought. I loved, uh, I love Morbius. I think he's a really cool character. And I was happy to get this one because I'm a big fan of Hobgoblin. There we go. Nice Enchantress there. That's where he had a run in with vampires. The Vampiric Verses. Part three of five. I should go back and try to get as many of these older books as I can. And of course, I've got this one. Crosses over with Doc with a uh, Ghost Rider. I think part one was in Ghost Rider. Part two is in Doctor Strange. And then we jump into the Infinity Gauntlet. Then there's a run of books here I got for the Infinity Gauntlet. <clears throat> It's just some good times. Good, good times. Let's see. Let's see. What, what issues do I have here? There's 31, 32. I'm missing 33. So there's 34 with Dark Doom. Then I jump to 37. <laughs> yeah, I didn't stick with Doctor Strange much in this time. <clears throat> I did get this story though, the uh, the Great Fear, because this uh, it, it focuses on the Fear Lord. So you have, you know, Scarecrow, then you've got uh, like the Lurking Fear. Um, I think that's Knox. I think that's what her name was. I don't remember, but it, it dealt with a lot of the um, the the Dark Gods. Uh, Despair was one of them. Yeah, there's Despair. I've got his first appearance somewhere. Nightmare, and uh, the I think that's the Lurking Unknown or the Lurking Fear or something like that. But you know, some really great monster characters and then we get ready to jump into the infinity war <clears throat> with this issue a great galactus cover some awesome stuff there another nice cover Juggernaut. There's something about this cover. I don't remember what it was, but it seems like there was something about this comic that uh, uh, made waves recently. Some more Infinity War. I should put boards on the rest of these. I get more boxes and have more room to spread out. I'll get... Uh, I'll put these in boxes. There's the blue Doctor Strange. Not really too sure what that's all about. Another really, cover, another really nice cover that I like. Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, no more. Which led into issue 50. Nice um, hollow foil cover there. Nice little gimmick. Direct edition. Uh, Ghost Rider, Hulk, and Silver Surfer. I think this this is um, like an early Secret Defenders thing going on here. And I need to look at this issue again because I remember that there was an issue somewhere where 
the Silver Surfer had a run-in with the Hulk, and the Hulk was in full rage. And Surfer's, I remember Surfer was standing on a surfboard behind the Hulk, kind of you know gets his attention, and the Hulk turns around and punches him full force into his chest, and the Surfer just stood there, didn't flinch, didn't move. I gotta find that book. Another Morbius cover. Now we're getting into the Midnight Suns era, and that's Midnight Suns spelled S-O-N-S. He uh, wasn't part. Uh, he was. He didn't have any books that were directly part of Rise of the Midnight Suns or Midnight Massacre, but he was part of the Siege of Darkness. He got split up into three different personalities. This one here is my favorite. This is strange. His sort of um, his more. I don't want to say animalistic, but it was his. Uh, he was just. He had no conscience really. He was mean. He was just vicious. Went toe to toe with Doom. It's good stuff. This is sort of the, the this is a uh, uh, Doctor Stevens. I think he was this one was called, and he was sort of like the suave, debonair, arrogant doctor. Another one of my favorite covers. That's some great covers back in these days. Ah, Wong he didn't make too many cover appearances, did he? Clea. This is a good era for Doctor Strange. I remember this era fondly. Polaris. <laughs> Random X Factor thing there. They have some Kyle Holtz covers with uh, Doctor Strange and the Incredible Hulk. Some good stuff here. And this is the last one for this box. Strange has had better days. So. I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to jump over, grab the other box, and we'll be right back. All right. Got the second buck, the second box, rather, all set, ready to go. So let's let's jump into this here. A um, few more to go. Uh, last rights. I like the covers for this one here. And this is where they introduced a character, um, Salome, I think. She was sort of a, a female, sort of an antithesis of um, of Doctor Strange. She also kind of reminded me of Chaos Comics Purgatory and her, her design. <clears throat> hey, there she is. You know, oh, uh, she, she's gray instead of red, but, you know, winged, and I don't know, she... I, I wish I could really remember what her deal was, but I, I do remember really liking this storyline, The Last Rites. And then it just kind of got weird from there. You know, we got a new look for the doc, and I don't know. It was just—it was like his uh, all the all three of his parts sort of they reemerged and created this new version of Doctor Strange. This newer, younger version still had you know with the uh, the rogue streak in his hair. I don't know, it was kind of weird. And that is I don't remember. I need to go back and reread some of these issues. I'm telling you, there's some great characters that I've forgotten all about. I did like this look for Doctor Strange though. And then, of course, they had to toss him into the Over the Edge family of books, which made no sense at all, but it is what it is. And The Birth of Cathan, the final issue for this run. That's Victoria Montesi, like Mark Buckingham from uh, Fables. But that's Victoria Montesi. She was in the uh, the Darkhold, pages from the Book of Sins uh, series. And she, um, if I remember right, her parents could not have children, like the mom couldn't have kids or whatever. So her father read a page from the Darkhold in order to have her. So she was a product of the Darkhold. And she became pregnant at some point with Cathan. And this issue here, Doctor Strange put her in sort of a, a mystical stasis lock. So that you know, she, unfortunately, she was never able to give birth. She He, he was able to freeze time at that moment, right before Cathan was reborn, and he was supposed to go back and sort of revisit the issue to sort of figure out a way to save her and also prevent Cathan from coming into our world, because if he did, it'd be a bad thing for everybody involved. I don't think that they ever resolved that storyline, um, but, you know, it, that's how Marvel is. And then there's um, another Marvel, another Doctor Strange ongoing series. I didn't get a whole lot into it. I got the, I've got the hardcovers for this. But uh, I had to get this cover. Mark Texiera, uh, Midnight Sun, sort of 90s cover with uh, the, the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. 
you got Morbius, you got Strange, you got Blade before he had a name, and you got Johnny Blaze. Some good stuff there. I had to get that. And then the whole storyline where, you know, he becomes sort of a herald to Galactus, I wanted to get, but I don't think I finished the storyline because Mark Wade decided to become a dick and I wasn't going to support him anymore, so I just I dropped it mid storyline. I I'm not too fond of, of comic book creators who openly attack fans and you know just get involved in things they don't need to get involved with. Think their politics is the only politics and it has to be involved, you know, every issue of everything that they do has to have something to do with their personal politics. I don't care about your personal politics. Just give me a good story. Give me good characters. That's what I care about. That's why I'm here. That's why all these these boxes here, that's why they're all in this room because I love the characters. I love the art. I love the writing. I don't care about your politics. Keep it to yourself. So I may never know how that storyline ends. And honestly, I really don't care. Moving on. Annuals. This is 1976 annual. Good stuff. And then the 1994 annual. Cool. Actually, that cover kind of looks like the other another cover that he did uh, with with her on it. Let's see. Um, where is it? Yeah, kind of like the swirly strange, and then the swirly strange, weird stuff. Marvel is sometimes they they get lost with what they do. And then there was this. This was this was cool. This was um uh the Doctor Strange Ghost Rider special. This was the Doctor Strange issue of this crossover, and they just decided to do it as a special. I don't know. It was kind of a kind of a weird thing, but it was another book to have Ghost Rider on it at the time, so I decided to pick it up. Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer's Supreme. Only reason why I picked this up, because it's got Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider on it. The only reason why I bought that variant. Then there's Flight of Bones miniseries. I don't think I've read this one, but I got it because the covers are cool. Again, I apologize for the focusing on this. This is a new camera. Got to figure out what to do to keep the uh, the focus well, the hidden focus. And it was just a four issue miniseries. And then we follow that with Marvel Vault One Shot, Doctor Strange. Now, Marvel Vault was supposed to be a way for Marvel to sort of get these stories that. Uh, were kind of buried over the years that were never put out they were kind of put in the marvel vault so to speak and just finish them up and publish them as a one shot and i think there was a couple of them i only got the doctor strange one though it was a pretty good story and this is doctor strange the last days of magic variant cover this is a very worthless book um i, I wound up spending how much was this thing six bucks for this thing and it was it, i think it crossed over with with deadpool who was dealing with magic and monsters at the time, but I just remember reading this book thinking, you know, I really didn't need this book. It's kind of kind of useless, but nice cover. Dr. Strange, The Oath. Been a while since I've read this one, but I do remember really enjoying this miniseries. And I love, absolutely love the covers. Sort of an old school look for Doctor Strange. It looks kind of made him look like sort of like Vincent Price back in the days. I think that's what what the original um, inspiration for the character design was actually was Vincent Price, one of the all time greats. Somebody could fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And we're almost done here. I decided to toss this, and I should put these all together in their own section. The Amalgam books. This is Doctor Strange Fate. This was when. Uh, during the Marvel vs. DC, DC vs. Marvel event, uh, at some point the two universes, the Marvel and DC universes, were united and all the characters became amalgamated. So you had, uh, like, Dark Claw was Wolverine and uh, Batman, and Speed Demon was Etrigan, um, The Flash, and Ghost Rider. And this one here, this is an amalgamation of three characters. This is you know, obviously Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate, but underneath Doctor, St uh, Doctor Fate's helmet was Xavier, Charles Xavier. So... Good stuff. If you want to check out something that's really different and really shows how imaginative and unique Marvel and DC can be, check out those Amalgam books. They did a lot of good job. They did a lot of work with them with even stuff like they, they, they had letters pages in them. They, they established these books as if they were long running books and long running characters and it always existed. They've, it's almost like 
not only were the comic books amalgamated, but also the fan bases of Marvel and DC were amalgamated as well. It was really cool. And this is going to be the last one. It's a reprint book, Doctor Strange versus Dracula. It uh, you know reprints you know, a couple of issues. I believe these are Doctor Strange issues where you know he has a run-in with the Lord of Vampires, Dracula. So there you go. That's it. Now all that's left in this box here. I mean, I've got um, I got some Brother Voodoo. I got a couple of issues of that. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I'm not pulling up a bad cover. Okay, I got some dull face in here. Um, I might do that series at some point too. Ooh. Anyway, okay. See, see, this is what happens. You guys out there and you gals out there that collect comic books, you know what I'm talking about. When you start looking at your books, you start flipping through your books, and you're just totally distracted from everything else. So. Let's not do that, okay? Because anybody who collects comic books, as I just said, you know, you start flipping through those books. That's that's an entire day, maybe even more than one day, of just flipping through comics. And you just, you'll just you flip through them and you'll start looking at the covers. Like, oh, this is really cool. I remember then you start reading them. And then it just, you know, just flipping through a few books becomes like a week-long project because you keep flipping through everything. But uh, that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, my collection of Doctor Strange books. As I said, not a lot of really great issues. There's not a lot of key issues or anything like that in there, but that's fine. This is what really we should be focusing on as far as our comic book collecting goes. I mean, it's it's great to have the keys. Don't get me wrong. It's great to have the keys. It's great to have those first appearances, those second appearances, those cameos, those uh, you know first cover appearances, first meetups of, of you know these two characters. That's, it's really cool to have those things. But I think we are becoming too focused on that as a fan base, as a fandom. And we're kind of losing... Uh, we're, we're, we're losing sight of... The joy, the fun of collecting. Now, if, if that's what brings you joy with collecting comic books, more power to you. And, and you know, I applaud you for that. But I think for the most part, we're letting that, we're letting this this, this speculator market, the secondary market, this, this uh, FOMO, this fear of missing out, sort of supersede why we're here in the first place and why we like reading our comic books in the first place. And I part of the reason why I'm doing this is to get back to that. Uh, now, that said, off of my, my soapbox now, uh, this Monday I will be having a mini Monday. It is going to be, and I was going to pull it out and, and show everybody, but I decided not to, but it is going to be the Marvel miniseries Space Punisher. And if you've never heard of it before, yes, it does exist. You can look it up. It's got some great Mark Texiera covers, and it is pretty much what you expect it to be from the title. It is Punisher in space. And one of those great, long-forgotten, very seldom-talked-about miniseries. And I was kind of surprised that when when um, Donny Cates did that Cosmic Ghost Rider, one of my another one of the characters I really don't care for. But when they did, when he did Cosmic Ghost Rider, everybody was talking about the uh, the Spirit of Vengeance character from Guardians of the Galaxy back in the '90s. Nobody talked about Space Punisher. It's like Space Punisher. He's right there, you know. But maybe it's just something that not a lot of people know about. So hopefully, starting on Monday, <clears throat> when I when I talk about this miniseries, hopefully it 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 will introduce this character to uh, and this miniseries to a whole new group of fans that will go out and look for it. That'd be really awesome. It's sort of um it's sort of a what if, I believe. Um, it's been a couple of years since I've read it, but I'm going to be rereading it this weekend, and we're going to talk about it on Monday. It's going to be Space Punisher on Mini Monday. And um, there's uh, there's a possibility that this series, Full Run Friday, might switch to a bi-weekly uh, deal. So it may be, uh, you know, one week we'll do Mini Monday and then the next week we'll do Full Run Friday. I'm not sure yet, just because I got a lot of stuff going on and I'm, I'm, I'm worried that I may not be able to do these as often as I want to. So we'll, uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that. But that aside... Thank you for joining me on my uh, full run Friday this week and talking about my and showing off my Doctor Strange comic books. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, again, and probably not a lot of keys in there. So if you're a speculator, that sort of thing, you're probably not that impressed with my comic book collection. That's that's uh, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, 
if there are keys in there, let me know. I mean, I, I, I do have the key collector thing, but I just haven't gone through it with my Doctor Strange books yet. So uh, that said, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see everybody on Monday with Mini Monday Space Punisher. And uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification button. <clears throat> Excuse me, clear my throat, all that fun stuff. And thank you again for watching and your continued support. We'll see everybody on Monday. Have a great weekend.